What's up everybody, it's Nora and I'm back to tell you guys about all of the medical diagnoses that I have. I've talked about my medical diagnoses here and there on my channel, but honestly I haven't like sat down and talked to you guys about all the ones that I have, so that is what I'm going to tell you guys today. I'm going to start off with all of the mental health ones. I have generalized anxiety disorder, which causes me to like panic, but at like very specific things. I have depression, which I actually don't think I've ever admitted to on camera, and I also, if you don't know me, I have ADHD. Moving on to ones that I have that are just general health disorders, I have IBD, more specifically I have ulcerative colitis, and with my ulcerative colitis, when I flare, but only when I flare, do I have uvitis, which is inflammation of the eye, arthritis, inflammation of the joints. I also can get anemic specifically when I'm flaring and I have a lot of blood loss and on top of that because if I'm flaring I also do get very malnourished. Besides IBD I also have IBS which is irritable bowel syndrome which more just uh, comes around when I like get really nervous I just poop a lot sorry if you don't like any gross things you probably should not be watching this video and if you don't want to know any like TMI or anything about me again don't watch this video but I'm going to just be straight up and honest and tell you guys everything that I have. Besides IBD and IBS, I also have ovarian cysts, which are very common for women to have. I also have a retroflex uterus. So instead of people having just like a regular straight up uterus, some people have retroverted, which is tilted back, and then I have a retroflexed one, which means it's tilted back and it's folded over the top. And it is tilted back towards my spine, not towards the front. I also, on top of that, have a duplex kidney. My right kidney has two ureters. They don't know if it joins at any point or if it goes down to my bladder. That was an accidental finding that they had on my MRI. Another kind of scary thing that caused me to actually have a cancer scare when I had my MRI to make sure that I actually didn't have Crohn's disease is they found that I also have a benign liver lesion or tumor if you want to call it. It is 4.2 centimeters and it sits between the 6th and 7th sections of my liver. It doesn't do anything. It could have been caused by injury, hormones, just a bunch of random stuff and it doesn't, it just sits there honestly. Typically if it gets over like 5 centimeters they'll remove it but mine just chills at 4.2. I also because of I believe the birth control I've been on, not only do I have um, cysts on my ovaries, I also have fibrocytic breasts so this also caused another cancer scare where I pretty much just have like extra dense breast tissue on my boobs but I, at one point it occurred in such a way that it felt like a lump so I had to go and get an ultrasound of my boobs and get like a bunch of boob exams which it can be pretty awkward I happened when I was 19 and that's not like I had two different doctors telling me I had cancer even though they probably shouldn't have said that and they were like no you probably do like we should get a diagnosis for you so that was um, not a fun scare to have to go through because it took like two weeks for me to actually figure out that no it was just extra dense breast tissue most likely caused by progesterone and I used to be on Nexplanon which is a progesterone only birth control implant. I also from sports have an injury to my left ankle I have osteochondritis pretty much osteochondritis for specifically in my case, I have a flap under the ankle bone or where the fibula and tibia are. It rests obviously in the socket of the ankle and then I have all the cartilage that rests under the bone. So in that cartilage, I have a mini flap of cartilage that when the bone moves around, it likes to get caught and get really irritated. So when I do sports a bunch, I have to be careful because sometimes I can really irritate that again and it most likely will never heal because the cartilage has no blood vessels in it. I also from soccer when I was in middle school messed up my knee, my left knee, same side that I have osteochondritis of my left ankle but I don't doubt that I also did something to the cartilage in that knee because ever since that injury I've always had a weird locking knee. I kind of have to like throw it back to unlock it. It gets very clicky when you move it around but I've never actually had it examined because it's never gotten to the point where I like can't walk on it. It likes to swell up every once in a while and it does bother me here and there with running but at this point in time it's not something that I'm like dying to need fixed. Sometimes it doesn't bother me at all and sometimes it really does bother me but I just during those times just kind of sit through it and get through it and just kind of ignore it and know that it will eventually go away. My other knee of late also with running which I haven't gotten checked out but again I don't feel a need to get it checked out because it's not an emergency but for some reason with my right knee I have 
some kind of like ligament or tendon right below my kneecap that is like slipping up and so all of a sudden I can feel it roll up when I try and straighten my leg all the way which is a weird uncomfortable a little bit painful feeling but it's again it's kind of the same thing where it sometimes happens it sometimes doesn't I also have knock knees so when I run they don't track properly I don't know if my problems with my knees are because they don't track properly and they're knocked or which if you don't know what knocked knees is they just you know they point a little inward instead of pointing straight which is what they're supposed to do and I always thought I had knock knees but no one ever said anything to me until my athletic trainers this past year when I was running and they actually were like no you actually do and I was like I always thought something was up with that and I always had knee problems I just never had them addressed and quite honestly don't care to go and have them fixed at this point I also this is kind of oh is irrelevant isn't irrelevant I also get a lot of cavities it is there's been studies that show that people with IBD have different bacteria in our mouth and I also have naturally deep fissures in my teeth so because of that I am a quite frequent cavity getter um I do brush my teeth I promise you I brush my teeth I just get cavities all the time and if it is different bacteria in my mouth and I really can't help that and just because I do naturally have deep fissures in my teeth there is going to be bacteria that gets in there and I'm going to continue to get them frequently most likely I also have had streaks where I've had certain lengths of months where at my doctor's visits I have hypertension so without my knowledge my doctor I brought it up to her my new primary doctor and I never thought anything of it although the fact that I knew that I did have at some points what is considered hypertension my blood pressure at times likes to chill around 135 over 90 like regularly and because of that I had mentioned it to doctors for like a good two or three years one or two years ago and every doctor blew me off and even my parents brought it up and every doctor was like no it's no big deal it's probably just your medications which it very well may have been but because of that my doctor actually looked back my new doctor and was like oh hey no you actually did have hypertension this is a little weird without me knowing she actually put down a diagnosis of hypertension in my my chart so now I do also have that diagnosis as well but Typically, I am a good 120. I do typically rest, though, diastolically over 90. Of late, I have been resting around 120, so I do make sure every single time I go to the doctors and do have my blood pressure taken that it is not going back to the 135 over 90, and it is still resting around 120 over 80, and of late, it has been pretty good and on the dot. On top of that, in the past year, I also got a diagnosis of insomnia. Typically, my insomnia surrounds, I think, not only my ADHD because I can't go to sleep at night because I just sit and think. It also has to do with my anxiety and my stress. All three of those just keep me awake at night. I almost get stuck in that in-between stage of like, I'm kind of dreaming, but I'm still awake, but I'm not fully asleep. And the past summer, I had to take like Z-Quil the entire summer to sleep every single night. And I almost was at the point where I probably should have been put on meds. But I actually decided to start using my weighted blanket that I've been given, which is I had gotten for that reason. I just had to get into the actual habit of using the weighted blanket and what a difference it has made. I still want to get like stressed out like a normal person, don't sleep. But as of right now, I'm not taking z every single day and I am in a good routine and getting actually a good amount of sleep. Another weird diagnosis that is kind of out of the ordinary that I have is vasomotor rhinitis which practically to me it feels like at any point in the day I can feel as if I have a cold my nose will get all inflamed and runny but it's not allergies it's just literally from my vagus nerve and it's just my autonomic nervous system kind of acting up it's never been like linked to any autoimmune diseases or whatever but I did go to the allergist because I did have an allergic reaction to a medication they did testing and they said, no, I don't have any intolerances. No, I don't have any allergies, even though technically I kind of do. He diagnosed me with vasomotor rhinitis. Running the past year actually has brought on a lot of injuries and problems that I have never experienced before. So I'm going to talk about those. Primarily the biggest one that actually like affects me practically every time I go for a run is I have exercise-induced asthma. Which is really weird because I never had asthma my entire life and I never struggled with breathing. But then again, I also was a little overweight the first year or two of college and I wasn't athletic at all. So how could I have known if I had developed exercise-induced asthma? I don't know. But I every single time I run, pretty much 
it feels like I'm only breathing out of like a third of my lung capacity and I'm I wheeze I wheeze badly that was the really big indicator to me that something was wrong is after I run for 30 minutes to an hour I'm constantly coughing I'm constantly wheezing to the point where like you can hear that my lungs are struggling and after I had been running for I think two three months I went to the nurse on campus nurse practitioner and I said hey I think I might have this so she was like alright I'll give you an inhaler you can use it and if it works you know you obviously have it if it doesn't maybe you are just struggling to breathe and suck at running quite honestly so I use that and what a difference it makes. When people say like when they have allergic reaction or they have asthma and they feel as if they are breathing through a straw, that is exactly how I feel when I run. The difference that I didn't even know that could, like the difference that I felt using that inhaler, I didn't even know was possible. I didn't even know it could feel that good when you run, even though running, you know, never terribly feels good. So I do use an inhaler for that. And then on top of that, I'm a chronic shin splinter, which I think happened when I started running and upping my mileage a little too quickly for the upcoming sports season. I also occasionally have also had plantar fasciitis. I have really tight IT bands, calves, and shins, which also all contribute to me having shin splints. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I am a very open person, and I will share practically anything with anybody. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.